Can you hear that? <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, my stomach just growled. Uh, welcome back to another video. My name is Amber. Today's video is just gonna be a day in the life. And that didn't go to plan. Instead of recording one day, I actually ended up recording over an entire week. And that is all in today's video. I'm gonna take you guys along for the day. It is supposed to be raining pretty much all day. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff indoors, including a lot of reselling stuff. So I thought I would um, take you guys along for the day. So it's 7.45 a.m. on Saturday and I'm gonna go grab us breakfast. As I said, <laughs> I'm hungry. My stomach is growling. Um, but before I grab breakfast, I wanna package up my sale and get it in the mailbox so that when the, um, the mail woman comes by, my package is in the mail. So over here is my stack of stuff I've listed in the last few weeks and I haven't inventoried it yet. That is on the to-do list today but I sold a pair of pants from the pile. These pants, they're from the brand Arborwear. They sold for 28. Poshmark took $5.60 out in a fee. I paid $5.99, so I profited $16.41. And now let's get these packaged up. breakfast in case you haven't met them before this is Monty Monty hey this is Monty <laughs> he's a four-year-old golden retriever and that is Jack he is a nine-year-old yeah I think he's nine yeah nine-year-old husky black lab just kind of a mix of a lot of stuff just got back from getting breakfast it smells so nice out like it rained this morning it's not raining right now but it smells like fresh rain and it's so dark, you can't see my face. There we go, it smells like fresh rain. Birds are chirping, <laughs> it just feels good. All right, breakfast is all done. My husband plays soccer every Saturday morning with some friends, so he's playing soccer. And now I'm gonna get some reselling stuff done. First thing I'm gonna do is inventory these items. So a few weeks ago, I was in Omaha and had a couple hours to kill. I um, went to the Goodwill outlet in Omaha and I think, I'm pretty sure their outlet was $1.29 per pound, which is super cheap compared to most of the outlets. In Des Moines, it's $1.59. So I was there for about an hour and a half, and this is what I picked up. First, I got this Nike hat. And let's see, I'm just gonna weigh them as I show you guys and then put it into my inventory spreadsheet. In my spreadsheet, I have like an unlisted tab, a listed tab, and then sold, and then I have more tabs for sold, like by, by year, by month. So all this stuff is gonna go onto the unlisted tab and I write down the type of item, the size, the brand, a description, where I bought the item and how much I paid. So let's see how much I paid for this hat. All right, so the hat weighs 3.3 ounces. <laughs> Based on weight, I paid 27 cents for this hat. I recorded this day in the life about a month ago. So a lot of the items that I'm gonna show you have sold. So if they've sold, I will tell you, this one has sold. It sold uh, about two weeks after listing it for $12. So after fees and the 27 cents I paid, I made a profit of $8.78. Next up, we have a pair of Lululemon leggings. I actually found two pairs of Lululemon leggings, which is pretty wild. They are a crop and they're like a red color with this red color in the inside with this uh, print on the outside. And they're a size six. These are just under seven ounces, so I paid 53 cents. <laughs> the best part of the outlet, everything is so cheap. Especially, I mean, obviously if it's lighter, lighter weight it is, the cheaper it is. Here's the other pair of Lululemon leggings. And what size are these? They are size four. So in Lululemon, you have to always look for these little pockets and they'll have the size dot in them. So here they are. And yeah, I couldn't believe I found two pairs of Lululemon leggings. I think, I don't know if I've ever found a pair. Maybe I found one pair before. Yeah, and I found two pairs of Lululemon leggings in just an hour and a half that I was there. And those are 7.4 ounces. So they're gonna be just a little bit more than the other pair of leggings. So those, these were 60 cents, <laughs> great prices. These have also sold and they sold only a couple hours after I listed them. 
So I listed the leggings for $50 and I got an offer for 40 on Facebook Marketplace and I accepted. Part of the reason I accepted is that Facebook has significantly lower fees than eBay or Poshmark. If these would have sold for 40 on Poshmark, they would have charged me $8 in fees. Facebook charged $2.43. So factoring in the 60 cents I paid, I made a profit of $36.97. And again, just a few hours after listing. My sister was with me and she found this Dunia Burke wallet. That's what it looks like. And again, this is pretty lightweight, so it would have been pretty inexpensive. This is 5.8 ounces. So that was 47 cents. <laughs> We're under a dollar on every single thing so far, which I love. This wallet also sold for $40 on Facebook Marketplace. I actually got an offer immediately on Poshmark for $35. So I listed the wallet at 50. I got an offer within five minutes for $35 and I countered that person and they never responded back. And then within the next couple of weeks, I got multiple offers for 20, 25 and $30. I countered everybody and didn't make a sale on those. But then fast forward about two weeks later, I got an offer for 40 on Facebook Marketplace and I happily accepted. And again, I was really happy that was on Facebook Marketplace because the fees were only $2.50. Then you factor in the 47 cents that I paid for the wallet at the outlet and I made a profit of $37.03. Two more items left. Oh, actually, so my mom actually gave me this belt. So it wasn't something I picked up that day, but I also put it in my inventory spreadsheet because I'll need to get this listed as well. This belt sold the same day I listed it on eBay for my full asking price of $15 plus shipping. And after fees, I made a profit of $10.23. And the final item I picked up that day at the Omaha Goodwill Outlet are these sandals from the brand Bed Stew. So Bed Stew is more known for their boots, but it's a really great brand and I'm sure these will sell well. I can't remember now, I know I looked up comps that day. I'm gonna guess it was like 40 to $50 was the expected sales value. And these are definitely heavier than the other items. So let's see how much I paid for them. So they weigh 15.3 ounces and at $1.29 per pound, they're gonna be just a little bit less than that $1.29. They are $1.23, <laughs> so I paid $1.23 for these Bed Stew sandals that have no wear on them. The Bed Stew sandals sold about two weeks after listing them on Poshmark for $50. Poshmark took $10 in fees, so after the $1.23 I paid, I profited $38.77. Bed Stew is definitely a brand I would look out for. I've only found it twice. As you can see, the other pair I found was a pair of boots that sold for 60 and they actually had some of the sole coming up and they still sold for 60. So definitely keep your eye out for this brand and if you find it, pick it up and it should be a good flip for you. So I have that little haul inventory, five items in total. I paid $3.10 for those five items. Well, and the belt, so six items, but five from the outlet. So I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna throw the stuff that can be washed that I picked up at the outlet. I'm gonna throw that in the washing machine with a, a load of clothes. And then I'm gonna grab a tub from my inventory area in order to inventory this stuff. I decided to add in one more to-do item while I'm going to be down in the basement. So in the basement, I'll start the laundry, get a bin for that stuff that is listed. And I'm also going to throw a couple bridesmaids dresses um, not throw them, but put them in OxyClean solution to get rid of stains. I really need to make progress on these dresses and I have not been. So if I get a couple things stain treated, then I, I will get them listed. I do have somebody that messaged me and is interested in anything I have in green or purple in size 16, 18, or 20. So I'm gonna try to find a couple. I know that I have some options in here, so I'm gonna pull out a couple of those and put those into the stain treating. Like I said, I'm gonna now inventory this stuff. Everything on this table is listed. I do have three pairs 
I can't see them, can you? There are three pairs of boots down here that are not listed. So those won't go down to inventory yet, but those need to get listed. Maybe today, we'll see. We'll see how, um, how the day goes. Maybe I'll list those boots today as well. So for inventorying, I have some block bags and whenever I sell stuff, then the bag goes in here. So as you can see right now, I have far more unlisted than I have at the peak because at the peak, every one of these bags was full. Um, but yeah, I've sold a lot. My inventory is really low right now. I only have like, I think 85 items listed, which yeah, like I said, that's pretty low for me for inventory. So all of these are things that used to be listed and now they're in here. So like, yeah, like I said, when something sells, I'll take it out as a block bag, put it in the package I'm shipping it in. And then the Ziploc bag goes in here and this thing until I uh, do some more inventory and then this stuff goes in here. And the main reason I do this is one, because then I can lint roll it right now. So then when I go to ship, I don't have to worry about lint rolling. I do, I do have two dogs as you guys saw. So their hair and my hair gets on the clothing. So I lint roll everything that I put into inventory. Then when I go to ship, I know it's hair free. And also it makes it easy and quick to ship because I can go to my inventory spreadsheet and I know exactly where it's at. So all this will be in tub B. Like I said, I have an unlisted sheet and a listed sheet. So right now all of this is already in inventory in terms of the prices that I paid, where I picked it up, the sizes, all that stuff's already been put into the unlisted sheet. So basically what I'll do is I will lint roll it, put it in the Ziploc bag, give it a number, and then I'll move it from the unlisted sheet to the listed sheet and add the inventory number. So I'm gonna do that now for all these items. I'm just a few minutes into inventorying and I realized, so I'm recording a video this weekend about this haul and I realized that, so this is the stuff that hasn't sold for the video, but I'm thinking if I wanna talk about those items, it would be nice to be able to show you guys what I'm talking about and hold up the item. So I'm thinking I'm actually gonna change directions. I'm going to go get ready to film a video. I'm gonna map out everything I wanna talk about and then I'm gonna record that video and then I can inventory it all because I will have already talked about it in the video. Recording videos take me a long time because I have to, like I said, plan out everything I wanna say, make sure that I'm ready, you know, I have everything in order of what I wanna talk about and then I can record. I'm gonna go do that now. It's about an hour and a half later and I have all the clips I recorded in the store edited with voiceovers. So now I'm gonna eat lunch and then I will record the rest of the video. I'm gonna say hello. No. <laughs> say hello to the people, Jacob. No. <laughs> if you ever wondered why Jacob's not in my videos, this is why he does not want to be in them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the storm has arrived. Let's check it out. <laughs> it's raining pretty hard. The camera's not really picking it up. Looks like it's lightly hailing too. Interesting, her phone just went off saying that there's a tornado warning and the siren's going off. So I decided to come downstairs even though it doesn't really look like anything is going on. National Weather Service, tornado warning in the area until 5.15 PM. It's 4.45 right now. I was gonna say, oh, yeah, our basement, it's a long story. We got some work to do down here. But I was telling Jacob that I am scarred because we had this windstorm come through Iowa called the derecho a couple years ago. And I was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like, it's just a little bit windy. And then the next thing I know, like tre trees are falling all over our property. And I'm running to the basement as a tree like nearly falls on the house. So that storm right there is where the tornado is. And it, we live up here where my finger is up here. And it, they said it is moving rapidly this direction. And we are right here. Who's coming to join me? Jack, come on. Come on. Oh, lightning. 
Or is that you? Is that electricity just... Yes! <laughs> was our electricity just going out or did you flick the lights? No, I think that's just... It's shaking the the glass down here. Yeah, that was a really big... Uh... Wow. So, this is our backyard. The um, storm with the tornadoes just went south of us and apparently there were tornadoes. I don't know how much damage they did, but thankfully it missed us. Hopefully it didn't do much damage. And now there's another storm coming. Um, you can kind of see how dark it is on the horizon. Slight change of plans. I'm going to relax, watch TV, and address baby shower invites. So I've got the invites and the envelopes here and I need to get these sent out Monday. So I need to get this done this weekend. So it is now 4 p.m. on Sunday. And this morning I woke up, the first thing I did was to seal up all of the envelopes. So I addressed them all last night. And this morning I sealed them. And then I stopped at, not at the post, not at the post office because it's Sunday, but the um, grocery store has stamps. So I stopped at the grocery store, picked up stamps. And now I am at the post office and they have a drop box over here. So I'm going to put stamps on these, drop them off in the drop box. Then I'm gonna head home and I'm either gonna nap for an hour or I'm gonna go right into recording the men's wear video. Um, either way, I, I have to get the video recorded tonight because it's going live tomorrow at 4 p.m. Definitely have to get it recorded tonight. So anyways, I'm gonna put these stamps on. I'm gonna go home, record that video and that'll be my weekend. Fast forward to Thursday. So it is Thursday morning and I recorded the video with the, all the men's clothing on Sunday, got that uploaded on Monday. So all this can actually be inventory now. And you might be thinking Thursday morning, don't you have a full-time job? Yes, I do. Um, today is a non-traditional day of work for me. So I think most of you know, but I know I have some new subscribers. So if you didn't know, I work full-time as an actuary. And today is Iowa Actuary Club Day. <laughs> Once or twice a year, they have a day where they have three hours of continuing education followed by a lunch and networking. Uh, that was, so pre-COVID, I would be at a college campus today going from session to session and then also networking with um, different actuaries and then having lunch with people. But um, post-COVID, it's all online. So in about three minutes, <laughs> the next session starts and I'll just be listening to it on my headphones and I guess I'll use my brain capacity to listen but I can, you know, lit roll while I listen. So that's my plan. The first session I listened to this morning was about uh, an accounting regulation change that impacts actuaries. The next one should be more interesting. It's about climate change and its impact on actuarial work. <laughs> So the next section, session I'm going to is actually not the Iowa Actuary Club session. It happens that the Society of Actuaries, they host webcast a few times a month. And there's one I really want to go to that is right now. <laughs> so the same time as the Iowa Actuaries Club session. And it is called, What Actuaries Can Learn From Software Engineers? <laughs> and my husband is a software engineer and there are definitely things I know I could learn from him. So I'm gonna go to the session, see what I learned, and then uh, let my husband know what, what uh, they said I could learn from him. <laughs> During this session, I'm going to list, or photograph at least, this. It is a um, hymn board. So, you know, in church, you have the numbers of which hymns to go to. 
And these sell for like $100 on eBay, at least 100. It's one hour later. I did not do what I planned to do, but I did get some stuff listed. So uh, an auction, I bought a lot of stuff and I only bought the lot because I saw this one perfume in the lot and I looked it up on eBay and sold that it, saw that it sells for over $100. So there was actually a listing sold a week or two ago of this exact same perfume, sealed, same size, same box, sold by someone who only sells perfumes and it sold for $188 plus shipping. So I listed mine at $199, that way I have room for offers and this is officially listed. Um, Poshmark, you can't list perfumes because they only do priority mail and you cannot ship perfume priority mail. It has to be shipped ground. Uh, so I didn't list it on Poshmark and Facebook. I am just too nervous to list something really expensive because Facebook does not have very good protections for sellers. So it's only listed on eBay. Then this perfume was also in the lot. It sells for like $18 with free shipping. So not very much, but got this listed on Facebook marketplace and on eBay. So those two are listed now. I also photographed the hem board. Uh, I did not get it listed because I want to see how much it weighs and what size of box. So that's something I learned in the past is for stuff that's a pain to ship, I uh, figure out the boxes and I basically get it sh packaged up before I list it. That way I make sure I'm charging the right amount and when it ships, I don't have to be stressed about having a deadline to get it packaged up. It is noon now. So I'm going to, and I'm done with webcast for the day. So I'm going to eat lunch and then I will log on for the rest of the day just to do normal work. Work is done for the day. I'm now down in my basement and down here I have inventory and I have boxes and packaging supplies. So I brought the hem board down and I'm going to package it up so that I know exactly how big the box is, exactly how much it weighs. And then I will put it down here somewhere <laughs> to store it until it sells. Well, even my biggest box is not long enough, so I'm gonna have to combine the boxes, which I do not have much practice or skill in. So this is gonna be interesting. feels decent. I have uh, four sides, bubble wrap center. Now I just need to make the top similar and like put some more padding in here. I don't know, I think it's, it's coming along. would work. It's ugly. It looks like a mess, but I think it would get to the buyer. Um, I'm gonna put some more tape on it, then I'm gonna go weigh it, measure it, figure out how much it's gonna cost to ship. I've never shipped anything this big, so I really have no clue how much it's gonna cost. All right, it is 14 pounds and six ounces. Now, let's go see how much things cost to ship. It's a good thing that I figured out the shipping before I listed it because it sold in like two hours for a full price. <laughs> okay, so, right, we remember this? I guess it's only been like a second for you guys. The last thing I told you guys was that I was gonna go figure out shipping for the hem board. So I went to figure out shipping. <clears throat> I used Pirate Ship to estimate it because it, it compares USPS, FedEx, and UPS. And I put in three addresses. One was in Iowa, because that should be the cheapest since I live in Iowa. One was in New York and one was in California. Because <clears throat> I want to get a range to see what it would cost. So this, the cheapest shipping service was US, UPS Ground, which was $16 to Iowa, $25 to New York, and $37 to California. I listed the hem board last night at $120 plus $30 flat shipping. 
and it sold within two hours <laughs> for full price. Unfortunately, it sold to California, so the most expensive state for me. Again, the shipping cost $31 and I charged the buyer $30, so almost perfect. And it sold in two hours. I was so shocked. I, I thought this was gonna be like a more long tail item that was gonna take a bit for the right buyer. It did have a flaw, a piece of the wood is coming up on the back and it still sold within two hours. So hem boards, keep your eye out. Apparently they're a bolo, a quick flip for over a hundred dollars. Monty, is that exciting? The hem board sold. Unfortunately, the first buyer immediately opened a return after receiving the hem board and they said the wood wasn't what they expected. Thankfully, I don't have free returns, so they did have to pay for the shipping to get it back to me, and they had paid for the shipping to get it to them. So I'm just out a little bit of money on the difference on the original shipping. I relisted it, and again, I listed it at 120 plus 29.99 shipping. Three days after I relisted it, I got an offer for $100 and I accepted. And that has been delivered now for about a week and I haven't heard anything from that buyer. So I think we are good to go and that it did sell for $100. I bought the hem board at an online auction for $7 and then I paid my sister $20 to go pick it up. Unfortunately, with the online auctions, their pickup is always during the middle of the day on a weekday, which does not work well for a, you know, a normal nine to five job. So again, I paid my sister $20 to pick it up for me. Plus seven is the cost that I paid to the auction. So after fees and shipping, I made a profit of $59.45. I had no idea how well this would sell. If you see a hem board, pick it up. It sold so fast. And again, it sold twice very quickly. And my janky packaging held up from Iowa to California, back to Iowa, and then all the way to New York. So it might not have looked very nice, but it got the item there in the right condition. Good morning. It is Saturday morning, which means I have time to do some listing. The plan is to list everything I have showed in this video and said I was going to list, but I have not listed. This afternoon, I am going to my friend's house for a crafternoon where a bunch of people get together and work on their crafts. So one of my friends is crocheting, another is working on things for her garden, and I'm going to plan to list. So I'm gonna to try to get this all photographed and then I will list at her house this afternoon. My husband and I are going out for lunch, so I need to get this all photographed before he gets back from soccer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 items. Let's get to photographing. All of the items I showed you guys got listed this weekend. I, so I recently made a top 10 cowboy boot brand video and I talked about this brand and said I think it was probably the best on the list. The brand is Lucchese. And then a week later I found the brand for the first time. So these boots do have heel drag, which means that the, the boot isn't completely flat. Like you can see this one, it's kind of tilted where the heel has drug against the ground. And there are some scuffs on the bottom as well. So my point in all that is I probably would have listed them higher if they didn't have those flaws. I listed the boots at $130. And again, just within a few hours of listing them, I got an offer for $100 on Poshmark and I accepted. So Poshmark will take, again, a 20% fee. So they'll take $20, which leaves me with 80. And I paid $10 for these. So I profited $70 on this sale. If you missed that cowboy boot brand video and want to learn 10 boot brands to be on the lookout for, I will link that video here. And that is going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Check out that video and otherwise stay tuned because I'll have a new video out soon.